Okay, this is section 8.2, and this is the difference of two means, small sample, and we're dealing with two different groups again, so it's the unpaired t-test, and so the only difference here is that we're dealing with groups that are, have less than 30 people on it. And this example one here says, uh, crash tests at five miles per hour were performed on five small trucks of the same model and eight SUVs of the same model. For the small trucks, the mean bumper repair cost was $1,520 with a standard deviation of $403. For the SUV, the mean bumper repair cost was $937 with a standard deviation of $382. Test the claim that the bumper repair cost is greater for small trucks than for SUVs and summarize at the most significant alpha level. So we'll be using the unpaired t-test because we're testing to see if the if mean for the trucks, the average repair cost for the trucks is greater than the average repair cost for the SUVs. Now if we're dealing with small samples like this, we have to assume that the uh, data is normally distributed to do this. It's always better to sample 30 or more from both groups, but you don't really want to wreck that many trucks and cars to uh, check them. So we pretty much assume that the data is normally distributed so we can do this with a small sample. We'll be doing a right tail test on the unpaired t-test because we're checking to see if the average repair cost for the trucks is significantly greater than the SUVs. So we go to our unpaired uh, t-test and we'll be doing a right tail test and said so summarize at the most significant alpha level so you might want to start off at the point one alpha level. So I have my data in here for my trucks and then for the uh, uh, SUVs here and the trucks average repair cost was 15 to 20 and the SUV average repair cost was $937. Well, is the 1520 enough greater than the 937 to say to make this inference for all trucks uh, of this type uh, that the repair cost for the bumper is significantly greater than the repair cost for the SUVs? Well, we get a p value when we work this out of 0.0118, which is less than 0.1, but it's said to summarize at the most significant alpha level, so we can. Uh, perhaps go down to the 0.05 and I would check it because it could be that this p-value changes so let's check the 0.05 alpha level and we get a reject I would still check the 0.01 just in case anything happens that it switches formulas on you because of uh, uh, the standard deviations maybe not being significantly different or so let's check the 0.01 and at the 0.01 we get do not reject the null hypothesis nothing's changed it's used the same formula the whole time so the most significant alpha level is the 0.05 and we would say at the 0.05 alpha level I'm able to say that the average repair cost at 5 miles per hour for the small trucks is significantly greater than the average repair cost for the uh, SUVs okay let's go on to the uh, next problem then and on this example, it says a real estate agent claims there is no difference between the mean household incomes of, of uh, two neighborhoods. The uh, average income of 12 households from the first neighborhood was 48250 with a standard deviation of $1,200. In the second neighborhood, 10 households have an average income of 50375 with a standard deviation of $3,400. Test the claim and summarize at the most significant alpha level. Well, they didn't give you any direction here to check to see if neighborhood one averages less or greater than neighborhood two. It's just checking claims there's no difference and there's nothing else in there about it. So this is going to be a two-tailed test. So this is my group one information, this is my group two information, and I would put this into the unpaired T-sheet. And let's go ahead and do that unpaired T-sheet right here. We're doing a two-tailed test. Here's neighborhood one, here's neighborhood two, and we get this p-value right here of 0.09. Well, that is just barely under the 0.1, which makes it significant at the 0.1 alpha level, you can check the 0.05 alpha level and nothing's changed. It's a, a, you don't get a change in the p-value, which means that uh, this p-value is not less than this alpha level of 0.05, so you get a do not reject. So the uh, most significant alpha level is the 0.1. Again, if it tells you to run it at a particular alpha level, then run it at that alpha level, but this one said run at the most significant alpha level. If we don't get a reject at the 0.1, then we just plain don't, but this one we did at the 0.1. So we would say at the 0.1 alpha level, I was able to show what? Well, summarize a two-tailed test in the direction of the rejection. Just don't say that at the 0.1 alpha level, I was able to show that the average uh, for uh, average household income for neighborhood one was significantly different than the average from neighborhood two. Actually, you can say that the average from uh, uh, 
the average household income from neighborhood one is significantly less than the average from neighborhood two. I know that for a couple reasons. First of all, I had to reject the null hypothesis to get a to be able to say that it's significantly less or significantly greater. Uh, now, the reason I knew this is significantly less than this is because this number, 48,000, is less than 50,000. Also, I had to get a reject to say that, but another way to know is that my test statistic is negative, so it rejected it on the left-hand side. You can see it just barely rejected it because this number here is just barely less than the negative 1.833. There's two rejections areas on this, and it rejected on the left, so that means mu1 is significantly less than mu2. So the average uh, home values from all the homes in uh, neighborhood one is significantly less than the average home values for all the homes in neighborhood two. We do that with just such a small sample like this, assuming that the neighborhood's uh, incomes are normally distributed, which is a pretty big step to take to say think that these uh, uh, these are normally distributed, their, their household incomes in these neighborhoods. They may not be normally distributed at all. So probably it would be definitely better off to sample more people so you get at least 30 people in each group. But um, with the truck problem earlier, yeah, you don't want to smash that many trucks, but why not go ahead and sample at least 30 people here on this? So that finishes off section 8.2. That's all there is to that. Oh, uh, and we already did talk about confidence intervals. And again, they would be down here, and they're based on your data. You have to have your data in this two-tailed test area right here. And your alpha level, again, um, your confidence level is 1 minus your alpha level. So if this is 0.1, then I'm 90% sure about this, that neighborhood one average income is somewhere between $4,000 uh, less than neighborhood two, up to only $54 less than neighborhood two. But still, zero is not within that confidence interval, which means that we have a significant result there. Okay, that'll do it.